part of the video series on this installation for the uh, SQ-1 system. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to basically show you guys how to tune the Recurve EZQ, the sound processor, and then we're going to show you how to uh, tune the amplifier as well. By now you should have downloaded these test tones. They're available from our website. Uh, you're going to burn them to a CD. And here are the test. Here's a picture. Let me see if I can zoom in there. Can you see these? Yeah. Here you can see we've got an 80 hertz test tone, a 1 kilohertz test tone, a 100 hertz test tone. So what we're going to be doing is uh, we're going to be using these test tones to set the output here, and then we're going to follow up with the setting up the output on the amplifier. Now at this point of the install, um, you should have everything connected except you're not going to have your speakers connected and you're not going to have the subwoofer connected. Here you can see the wire is still available, uh, even though the subwoofer is in the truck here. We didn't connect it to the back of the subwoofer. I'll move the camera here. Here you can see that the um, that the wires are run and the crossovers are ready to be connected. But these are the four speaker wires coming from the amplifier. We don't have them connected. We've also removed the dash speakers in this truck. Again, this is for a non-JBL setup. Please do not confuse this setup. There's a whole other video series on the on the JBL. Before you start the tuning process, you want to make sure that your subwoofer control knob, in this case, we've got it you can see that attached to this uh, it's going in the cup holder here I'm gonna plug in make sure my my subwoofer control knob is plugged in here and that the other side is running to the uh, recurve then I'm gonna make sure that the volume is turned up all the way on the knob and we'll explain that later while we're tuning all right so as we're uh, the preparation list let's go down the checklist of the things we need to do before we start the tuning process first um, here you can see I've got this recurve turned this way so you can get a good pick, uh, good view of it. First thing you're going to do is take all the knobs, turn them to all to 12 o'clock. Okay? Everything should be straight up and down at exactly 12 o'clock. The, the sub input needs to be set to front rear input because we're getting the signal from the front and rear speakers. So make sure that's flipped here. Alright, now obviously you've seen the videos on how to connect the recurve. So here on this side we've got the recurve all connected. I just wanted to give you a visual on this one. All right, so the next thing is we're, not, we're going to prep, prepare the amplifier. All right, we're going to start top left-hand corner. This is the front channels, and we're going to make sure the input sensitivity is all the way off or down. Let's turn it to the left. The high-pass filter, we're going to turn it all the way down to the left. Now the rear, we're going to take the input sensitivity, turn it all the way down and to the left. The high-pass filter, all the way down to the left. I'm going to, just to show you guys all the way to the left. Now on the subwoofer we're going to take the low pass filter we need to make sure this is turned all the way up as high as it'll go. The sub boost we're going to turn that all the way down. The sensitivity or the input gain as they call uh, it's called two different things here. Um, it's referred to as two different things. Some people call it sensitivity, input gain, it's all the same thing. Anyhow turn it all the way down and then you want to ensure that this config button is turned to six channel. We've got six channels coming in We've got front, which is two channels, rear, which is another two, and then the sub, so we have a total of six incoming channels. We're not going to be using the subwoofer remote because the, the, the recurve easy cue in this case will be taking care of the subwoofer controls. All right, so the next step is, as we stated earlier, everything's connected, everything's ready to go, except the front rear speaker wires are not connected, and the subwoofer is not connected. At this point, the dash speaker should be removed, and when we put in our test tone, we shouldn't hear anything coming from the truck. You might hear a little bit of high-pitched noise coming from the amp or the recurve during the tuning process, but you shouldn't hear any speakers playing. If you've got speakers playing, stop and figure out which speakers are hooked up because you do not want to run these test tones on your subwoofer or speakers. You, uh, you're, gonna, you, you're probably going to end up damaging them if you do. All right, so here we've turned the truck. Uh, the truck is running now the head unit's booting and the first thing we're going to do is make sure the volume is turned all the way down. Okay. Now we're going to take our test CD that you downloaded. Now we're, now we're going to insert the test CD. And the first thing you need to do is on the bottom right hand corner you're going to click on sound. And you need to make sure that all of the settings are flat. You know, the treble, the mid, and the bass are set totally flat. You don't want them to the left. You don't want it to the right. The front and the rear need to be in the, in the center. Now, go ahead and hit the back button there, Daniel, please. Now, this creates a lot of confusion. I want to clear this up for you guys. Um, 
the on the onboard database on your head unit may display the incorrect name for the test tones don't worry about that just look at the sheet as we showed you earlier and it'll tell you which one is which so the next step we're going to do is we're going to get our digital multimeter and we're going to set the output gain on the front then we're going to set the output gain or the sensitivity on the rear and then the same for the subwoofer and then we're going to show you how to set the crossover as well oh but before we do that we have to set the output on the recurve first we're going to go to test tone number two which in this case is a one kilohertz test tone so you can put it on number two and then hit the repeat button and that way it'll keep playing that same test tone over now what we're going to do is we're going to take our digital multimeter and we're going to check the reading coming coming out of our coming off the recurve. So here we're looking at the amplifier. You can see we've got the front channels installed, the rear channel and then the subwoofer channel. Obviously these are coming from the recurve. So what we're going to do next is we're actually going to unplug this one here. Oh god, these are in there tight. That's a good thing. All right, so for this part of the process, you're going to need to get a digital multimeter. You can pick one of these up at Harbor Freight, Walmart, anywhere from 15 to $25. You don't need a high-end unit like this. All right, so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take your digital multimeter. You're going to switch it from the off position to the V with the squiggly line, and that's for the alternating current. So we're going to switch that there. We should have zero to no voltage, or we should have no voltage at this point. I'm going to put this here. All right, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take, I've disconnected my front channel here. This is the left. So I'm going to take my multimeter. I'm going to take the negative, this, the outside shield here is the negative. The center is the positive. And you'll see that I immediately get 1.3 volts. That's coming from the recurve. So at this point of the, uh, of the tuning, we've got the one kilohertz test tone playing. What track was that again, Daniel? Two. Track number two is playing. So we're playing track number two, the one kilohertz test tone, and we've got 1.31 volts coming from the recurve. So what I'm gonna do is on my recurve, I've got one here. I'm gonna take this knob here, and on the since I'm doing the, uh, the front, I'm gonna take this and turn this knob up here, just a hair, and it's gonna jump. Let me see if I can see that, yeah. We're gonna take this one. We're gonna turn it up just a hair until we get two volts. So here you can see I've got 1.99. It doesn't have to be exact. Uh, I don't want to waste your time on the video, but I'll probably go back and set it to two. Okay, this does two things for us. Uh, one, we know by adjusting the front on the recurve and then connecting to the front output channel here, we've got the right RCA connected. A lot of times people get confused, they'll plug in the wrong RCA. So this lets me know that I've got the front connected to the front. So now my next step is I'm gonna take my digital multimeter connections and move it to my rear channel. All right, so same thing here. You can see it's already at 1.62. So I'm gonna go back to my recurve that's installed in the back of the vehicle. I'm just showing this one here to make it easy. I'm gonna take the rear and I'm gonna turn this up just until I get exactly two volts out of here. All right, so here again, I'm not gonna waste your time, but get as close as you can to two volts. Now we're gonna do the same thing for the subwoofer output. All right guys, so next we're gonna test or we're gonna set up the output from the subwoofer side. We're gonna need to change the test tone in this case to, uh, to track number eight, which is 50 hertz. You can see 50 hertz here. Uh, so we've changed it on the head unit to number eight and then I'm gonna do the same thing now. All right, so here you can see I've got 1.4 volts coming out. So I'm gonna take my, again, I'm gonna take this output here and turn this up until I get two volts coming out of the recurve. So again, for the purpose of the video, I just got as close as I could pretty quickly. All right, now, a side note, and this may confuse some of you guys that have looked at some of the past videos. Some amps, you're gonna wanna get a higher output voltage from the recurve you can probably get up to four volts. Now, we found that two volts works really good with the, with the Javelin setup. And what I mean by that is we keep a nice clean signal coming directly from the head unit. So I'm gonna switch back over to the recurve and show you what it looks like so far. All right, here's what the knobs look like so far on the recurve. Now notice that the lights, there's green light on the top one and the bottom one. Don't pay attention to those. We're only concerned about the output voltage at this point. All right, so here you can see the subwoofer is a little bit higher than the front and the rear. 
and right now we've got the exact same voltage going out to all the channels. So now we're ready to tune our amplifier. Okay, now we've got the output completed on the front, the rear, and the subwoofer coming from the recurve. So we have a nice level two volts coming into the amp. So the next thing we're going to do is set up the amplifier. The first thing we're going to do is set up the cross, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, the input sensitivity or the gain. We're going to try and get the maximum amount of power out of this amplifier that we can. And then we're going to set the crossover or what's called your high pass filter. And what that does is it ensures that only the proper signal is going to your speakers. So here, let me move the camera. Okay, here you can see we've got the speakers, the wires that are running directly to the amplifier. We don't have them hooked up. You need to be really careful. Don't let them touch. Your amp will go into a, into a protection state. So what we're going to do next is we're going to start with the front channel. All right, so here we've got the front left speaker connected to the digital multimeter. Here you can see I've got 7.5 volts, and this will vary just a little bit, so don't worry about that part yet. And then down towards the right, you see we've got a little oscilloscope. Obviously, you're not going to need this. We just want to show you what's going on so you can kind of get a picture of, of uh, what we're doing here in this tuning process. All right, so taking my amplifier, we're going to start with the front left. So I'm going to take the input sensitivity, which should be all the way down. I'm going to start turning this upward. And we're going to, our target voltage that you're going to try and hit is 18.5 volts. So, and again, I'm reiterating, we're using the one kilohertz test tone, which is track number six, and it's the negative three dB test tone. All right, here you can see I've got my target voltage of about 18.5 volts. If you look at the oscilloscope here, the reason I want, I'd like to show this to you guys is you can see the signal is beginning to clip at 18 and a half volts. What that means is when you have your head unit turned all the way up at all the way up to 50, the music, it will, uh, the signal is going to start to distort, and that's what'll damage your speakers and subwoofer. We like to set it at, at about 18.5 with a little bit of distortion for a couple of reasons. One, we're using a test tone, which is a static signal versus dynamic. Music is more dynamic. The second thing is we're using a CD test tone, which the music quality and the signal is going to be higher than your Bluetooth and quite a bit higher than your XM radio. So 50 will be about your max volume you're gonna to wanna to turn your head unit up to. Now if you're listening to XM, the XM signal on these Tundras tends to be lower. So you can probably go maybe 52, 54 as your max. Again, you, all you need to worry about is setting this 18.5. I just wanted to explain the, the, the process here on what we're doing. So the next step we're gonna do is we're gonna set the crossover to 80 hertz and what that's going to do is it's going to tell your amplifier only deliver 80 hertz music and above to your door speakers we need to do the same for the front and the rear so we need to switch to the let's see it's going to be the we'll go to number seven here if you can see it on the chart that's our 80 hertz test tone so we're going to go to the 80 hertz test tone which is track number seven okay and notice immediately it jumps already. So on the ampli on our how do I say this? On our webpage, there's a link to setting the high pass filter and the low pass filter. And it, there's a calculator on there. So what we're gonna do is you're gonna take this number and you're gonna punch it into the calculator. So our target voltage is our next thing we're gonna do is here, let me start over. What we're doing now is we're setting our high pass filter. The high pass filter is responsible for delivering the frequency above, in this case, 80 hertz to our door speakers. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start turning this knob up and you're gonna see this number start to decrease. And we're trying to hit a target voltage of what we're doing now is 17.09. So we're gonna turn this up until this number gets to 17.09 and that's gonna set our high pass filter at 80 hertz. Again, the link for this, the, the calculator is available on our website uh, for this particular amplifier. And so you don't have to worry about doing that calculation. We have a, we, the website actually does that for you. So I'm gonna take my screwdriver and I'm gonna turn my high pass filter up. <clears throat> All right, for the sake of the video, I'm not going to I'm not going to try and get exact 17.06 is barely higher than 17.02 But now we've set our high pass filter on the front to 80 Hertz So we've got our maximum gain set. So now we're going to perform the same steps for the rear doors So I'm going to take my connections and move it to the rear speaker So here in this part. We're setting up the rear speakers 
we put the test tone in again to the one kilo to the track number six, which is the one kilohertz negative three dB test tone. We already have 8.3 volts coming from the from the amplifier. So I'm not going to worry about the oscilloscope on this particular one. We're going to go to 17.5 volts on this one. So again, I'm simply going to turn my, in this case, I'm going to be turning this knob up until I get to 17.5 volts. All right, so here I've got just a hair over 17.5. And now we've set the, the input sensitivity or the gain for the rear speakers. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set the uh, crossover for the rear. So we're going to switch back again to test tone number seven, which is the 80 hertz negative 3 dB. You can see we've got 8.82 volts. Again, just to reiterate, we're playing the 80 hertz test tone, which is track number seven. And you're going to go back onto the calculator, put in 8.82, and that's going to give us our calculation for the high pass filter. Okay, so the calculator shows 6.2. So I'm going to take and turn my um, high pass filter up on the rear until I get to 6.2. For the purpose of this video, I'm not going to waste your time, but you're going to get as close as you can to 6.2. So at this point, we've got the front gain slash input sensitivity set. We've got the crossover set or the high pass filter set at 80 hertz that we perform the same steps for the rear. The inputs, uh, we've got the gain set for the rear, and then we've got the high pass filter set for the rear. So our next step is we're going to set up the subwoofer. So I'm going to take my connections, my digital multimeter, and I'm going to connect it to my subwoofer wiring. All right. So at this point, we're going to be setting we're setting up the output voltage on the subwoofer. I think I mentioned it earlier, but we've got the leads. They're connected to the subwoofer wire, and we've got track number four, four playing. And right now, we've got 13.9 volts. So our target voltage is 40. 3.5 volts with this amp. All right, so here you can see we've got it right at 43.5 volts running out. All right, so we've set the input sensitivity on, we've set the, yeah, the input sensitivity to the subwoofer. Now the next thing we're gonna do is set the crossover. So we're gonna again switch to test tone number four, no, number, number, number seven. And then we're gonna adjust, like I said earlier, we're gonna take the low pass filter and we're gonna start turning it down until we get to our target voltage. So Okay, so we have 31.73 volts, and if you go to the website again, we have a calculator. You're going to punch this number in for the low-pass filter calculator, and it's going to give you the target voltage. All right, so according to the calculator on our website for the low-pass filter, we're looking for a target voltage of 18.3. So again, we're playing the 80 hertz test tone. I'm going to turn the low-pass filter up. Wait, let me say, no, I'm sorry, down until I get to 18.3 volts. Pretty sure, I'm pretty sure I showed this to you already, but I wanna make sure we get it. Here is our low pass filter. Originally, you should have had this all the way turned up. Now we're gonna start turning this down until we get to the 18.3 volt, to the target voltage of 18.3 volts. So here I got as close as I could for the sake of the video. But we're looking for a target voltage of 18.3 volts, and that's it. We're pretty much done. We've got the front, rear, and the subwoofer all tuned for the maximum output. We've got the crossover set at 80 hertz. Now, this particular customer wants his item wants his crossover set at 63 hertz. He wants a little more mid bass. So what we're going to do in this case is you basically follow all the same procedures that you just did, except you use 63, the 63 hertz test tone which we'll make available on the site. We won't make it part of the regular test tones because mo we suggest 80 hertz as the crossover point. The reason we suggest 80 hertz is because at 63 hertz, you're, you risk at higher volumes, you risk damaging your speakers with the lower, um, with the lower range signal. This customer doesn't plan on turning his system up very loud and he likes a lot more mid bass. So we're gonna give him a little more mid bass by crossing over the signal at a lower, at a lower frequency. Again, we don't recommend this for most listeners. This this guy is pretty particular about his music. He already knows what he wants. So we're going to go back through and we're actually going to set this one at 63 hertz for him as well. All right, so we've completed the um, tuning process of the recurve and the amp. Everything's ready to go back into place. But I did want to go over some fine tuning. I get a lot. I get this question quite often, and I want to cover it with you guys while we're doing while we're going over it here. 
All right, so a lot of guys ask me, what do we do with these middle knobs? And the answer is, this is more preference than anything else. I'm gonna give you the settings and explain why I like to set them. And probably 99.5% of our customers are happy with this setting. All right, so the first thing I like to do is take the 100 hertz, turn it down. Then I like to take my higher frequencies, the one kilohertz, the, five, the two kilohertz, and the 10 kilohertz on both the front and the rear. And I'll turn these to about 10 o'clock. And the reason I do that is the stock, or not the stock, the aftermarket components to me seem a little bright with the signal coming from the recurve. Some guy, and it's preference, some guys like that super bright shrilliness, I don't. So you can play with these, you can turn them up, turn them down. Now on this side, starting from left to right, this is more of your mid bass signal here. So if you like a little more mid bass, I don't suggest turning it past the zero. I would suggest turning the knob down a hair more here and then barely kick this up just a hair. I mean hardly anything because it'll, it'll mess with, your whole, with all your settings. You don't want to go past the zero if you can. Now, you generally don't have to because the sound processor has already taken a lot of these signals into account. So generally in 99.5% of the, of the setups, it's going to look just like this. The tweeters, the 1 kilohertz, 2 kilohertz, and 10 are turned to about 10. The 100 hertz is turned all the way down and everything else is pretty much at 12 o'clock. We set these when we set the voltage. And a side note, if you're using a different amplifier, you may have to play with these knobs here because um, some amplifiers are going to, you have to either turn these down or up. So we may do other videos for other amplifiers. How do I explain this? Okay, we may do other videos for other amplifiers, but for the most part, the settings are all the same. You may get a, uh, if you've got a good quality subwoofer, I'm sorry, good quality amplifier, generally these settings will work all the way across the board. We've done this with the JL Audios, Alpine, um, some of the other, um, I can't think of them. Anyhow, quite a few of them, we've had good success. Now, we have had some bad luck with some low, low end amplifiers introducing a lot of noise into the system. If you're getting a lot of noise, sometimes you'll have to turn these knobs down or in some cases even up and then the gain down on your amplifier and that's a little bit of a game you'll have to play. Um, and again, every amplifier is different. We, however, we have been pretty successful with the higher end amplifiers. All right, I hope this video helps. Um, if you guys have any questions, suggestions, let us know and we'll try and do a follow-up video.